Hey Hardies, you're listening to the Hardies Hotline, your connection to Hope Valley, hosted by me, Casey, and my friends Caroline and Cami. A special thanks goes to our friend Brian Bird for letting us use the music on our show. Without further ado, grab a scone from Abigail's and enjoy! Hi friends, we are back with our final installment of our interview with... Mr. Brian Bird, a.k.a. Papa Hardy, a.k.a. Boom Master B. Boom! Um, By the way, y'all get that trending. And I hope you enjoy. We're just going to jump right into the conversation. I know we touched a little bit on um, your favorite episode with Rosaline. Um, It kind of ties into the next question we have. Do you have another favorite plot line involving a child, excluding Baby Jack? You can't talk about Baby Jack. (laughs) No, we've already covered that. That's a good one. Um, I love love the adoption of Cody and Becky Mm. very much. Oh, yeah. Um, As an adoptive father myself, I believe adoption is you, been sent by the heavens mm-hmm. to fix things in our in our lives in our culture, and it's not practiced enough mm-hmm. by people. It's it just not. Um, it would solve so many problems mm-hmm. in our in our culture, it's right? True. So so many problems are are happen in you know in our culture because of of fatherlessness or motherlessness or or parentlessness you know of young people Mm -hmm. and i i believe and i'm right about this because i've experienced it um that you know some people said to me well how could you i have i have i have three biological sons and two adopted daughters my Mm -hmm. patty and i do right um we've had some people say well we don't understand how you could love them the same way as your biological kids. And here's my theology about this. Love is thicker than blood. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I believe we're all adopted (laughs) anyway, in Mm -hmm. in sort of in the family, in the family of God, we're Mm -hmm. all sort of adopted kids. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I'm a big believer in adoption. And so when we began to talk about that storyline, and honestly, Lori Lachlan pitched that to us. Mm-hmm. Mm. She pitched that to us before that season. And she loved that. And when she did, I just said, Oh, that's that's touchdown right there. That that <laughs> I, I No argument from Papa no Hardy. Argument. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I am, you know, and that wasn't just one episode that, that, that spun over multiple episodes, Yeah. but I really loved that because it was redeeming also just like the widows with Elizabeth bringing, bringing her, her quilt Mm -hmm. in the final episode of season five, Uh right? Mm -hmm. Because they had experienced exactly what she did Mm -hmm. and right. Yeah. And Clara mm-hmm. had also that experienced was, exactly what oh, she did. That, she that was, was a very yeah, that was yes. that, oh, yeah. that was that was incredible right there. I love it when we redeem old storylines and old mm-hmm. backstory mm-hmm. into My favorite. our our current stories. And so, you know, for me, um, you know, being able to uh, to to bring those kids into the into the storytelling was was a deeply redemptive thing in their lives but also for abigail because yeah. guess what she lost, lost peter in the mind mm-hmm. yeah. Right? yeah and she's now she's now motherless right mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. she's a she's a a, a childless mother mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. you know having that opportunity to do that the, those stories i just i love when stories do those kinds of things mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. as, as as I might have mentioned to you when we did touch by an angel, you know, people's lives were deeply affected by by that that series, right? Yeah. Lives we think were saved. Well, my prayer is that there might be some adoptions out in in the real world in that happened because of those episodes that we did on on One Calls a Heart. Yeah. That'll be so. sweet. Yeah. 
That yes. would be an amazing story. Yeah. Yes, it would. In the in our families, it's it's happened. Uh, we were doing. Patty and I have been doing ancestry.com and trying to oh, dig back into our own wonderful. family lines. And every once in a while, you'll come to a block as you're pursuing the the an, the, mm -hmm. the ancestors, mm -hmm. and uh, more often than not, it's because there's an adoption there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the information seems to dry up because you, and, and it's because there was just a lack of records right. and adoptions back, back in the day. So um, I, I think it's a, it's a common thing. It's a good thing, you know, uh, for us to, you know, take kids into our homes that mm -hmm. would have no life or, you know, have, have, might end up in far worse circumstances if they weren't and it's not and i and i i believe that patty and i aren't heroes to our three our two daughters mm -hmm. they are ble they are more of a blessing to us yes than we mm -hmm. are to them right oh. rounding out our family the way they have mm -hmm. and there's so many lessons to be learned you know through uh, as a family when you go through experiences like that, that are rich, they're, uh, they're, they're, they add to the wealth, the emotional wealth mm -hmm. uh, yeah. of your yeah. family. So anyway, those, that, I hope that answers that question for you. Oh, that, oh yes, completely. Absolutely. <laughs> very easy and very easy for me to answer that question. <laughs> Good. Well, well, speak, speaking of baby Jack, what was the process like, like picking the gender? Like, and was it like a back and forth girl, boy, or were y'all set well, on we, boy? We, we, when, when Alfonso and, and our writing team were, were sort of trying to figure that out, right? It wasn't too hard to figure out that having a little boy mm -hmm. as the heir to Mountie Jack and being able <laughs> to name him Jack. Yeah. was fantastic right yeah. that's just mm -hmm. that's just a go that's a gold mine uh, in in terms of storytelling mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so there was no you, boxing match in the writer's room <laughs> no 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 i mean you know there it wasn't a boxing match you, you know we were looking at all the options and right. you know and talking alfonso you know with him as he went through that process you know, we said, oh, we were, joked around about, oh, little Jacqueline, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what if it was little Jacqueline and, you know, things like that. But um, it, it was, it became very clear to all of us into Hallmark Channel as well, because, you know, the channel, they, they speak into all the episodes, they, they give their input, you know, we want to be good partners with them, uh, because they, you know, their brand you know, they their brand better than anybody. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to lean into that relationship. And, you know, they're, they, they've been amazing partners, amazing patrons. The show is going into season eight. That is rare mm -hmm. on it television. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Right? Uh, you know, I, had two, I have two other uh, shows in my career that did that. You know, one went eight seasons, one went, one went nine seasons. And Michael's dad, Michael Landon's dad, mm -hmm. you know, Little House went nine seasons. Yeah. So we, you know, we, there's a legacy for us of long lasting shows. Aww. And yeah. so, you know, you want to do everything you can to give the network what they're looking for. And also, uh, you know, but, but also contribute what you do best, you know, mm -hmm. and that, and that marriage is, is, is necessary mm -hmm. it's absolutely mm -hmm. necessary so are you well, are you well, able to oh well pre-covid were you able to have very much interaction with the taylor twins oh when i yeah when i'm when last year when i was up yeah there, when you when you were yeah. up there i just didn't know how much yeah. time you spent on set how much time you were able to spend with them you were able yes. to have some nice interaction we did. We had Aww. great interaction. Uh, I, I, I would go into the, uh, w when they're working, uh, we have a little tent set up with their mom and their nanny. And uh -huh. so they would just be in there hanging out and goofing off while they were, 
you know, while we're waiting to, to bring them to camera. Right, right, and, right. Uh, so I would go into their tent and hang out with them and do little hand tricks with them and play oh, with yeah. them. And, they're and so it cute. was fun. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're fantastic. Gunner and Lincoln, they're just great little boys. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, it's a challenging thing to, to cast babies or yeah. infants because oh yeah you just don't you know it's a wild card you you don't know if they're going to cooperate you know you know you know your own children i mean mm -hmm. i know my own children they don't always do what you ask them to do right no. so uh, no, um, no 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 and and um uh, you know, sometimes, you know, and, and all and the real life sets in, you know, kids can be fussy, or they get a little runny nose, or mm -hmm. they fall down and bump their head and get a little pin pin mark bruise or, you know, whatever. And so it's just, you know, it's where real life meets art. And it's, <laughs> and it's, 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 um, and it's even more like, uh, profound or, or, or obvious when it's not adults who just know their P's and Q's and they know what they're, they know the rules, they know what they're supposed to do. You know, right. kids, it's like, they're learning. They're still yeah. learning uh -huh. about the world. It's every, everything, every experience is like an adventure to them. So um, these two boys have been fantastic. They, you know, and even, you know, the way they interact with Aaron and-, and Oh, so oh even, my goodness. So- Yeah, with, with, and with Lee and Pascal and, with Jack uh -huh. Wagner and, 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 right. And, and, you know, and, and Kevin, right. And, and I was going to ask about Kevin. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they really watch the adults, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, so, so like in the scene, like when Aaron's as Elizabeth is delivering lines to one of the other actors, you know, whichever twins in her arms, right. That moment they're watching. They're okay. like paying attention. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really, it's really kind of cute, and so the the uh, and I was around the Olsen twins when they were starring. On oh, you Full were? House. Yes, I was. Yeah, because we I was doing another show called Step by Step, which was part of uh, TGIF, which yeah, was yeah. part of the lineup. And so their stage was right next to our stage at Warner Brothers, where the Full oh. House were, and where the Step by Steps were uh, sets were. And we would actually have our cast meal, cast and crew meals together oh, wow. on show night, on show cool. night, because those, those half hour comedies are all shot in one night. Mm -hmm. They're all, mm -hmm. The whole show is shot in one night with, yeah. in front of an audience. And so you would have a cast and crew meal before sh the show would start. And, cool. um, and so we would have a joint meal with the full house gang with the Family Matters gang. We we're all on one big sound stage. Oh having, my God. So cool. You know, in a all meal the chair. Feels. So I would, so I remember seeing the, tw the Olsen twins when they're in scrollers, right? Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened with them that seems to be happening with, you know, with our boys, mm -hmm. um, Gunnar and Lincoln. They, 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 they're starting to get it. They're starting to learn what, it, you know, what they're supposed to do. And, and, you know, the transition will be challenge. you know, is challenging for them to go from, from just mugging for the camera and looking around mm -hmm. and, and having reactions to actually delivering lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're starting to see that a bit in what, what we're shooting right now. Yeah. So, uh, oh my uh, goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. Yes. So well, it's, it's really fun. It's really fun. Well, do you, do you have a best, like, funniest blooper that you were, like, you've seen on set? Like, uh, what's the fun scene? <laughs> I have to say, I have never been a fan of bloopers. Oh. <laughs> and I know they're fan favorite, and I kind of just sort of shrug and give into it and so forth. But in the past, I, I, would, I, would, I would just say, let's not do bloopers. Mm -hmm. Even though they happen. Even though they happen from time to time. Because sometimes... Right. You know, actors love to love to mix it up and, silly. and have fun, and yeah, and have fun and so forth. And the um, sometimes I'm not on our show, but when I'm watching other blooper reels, I can tell which ones are totally staged. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that is so fake. They didn't really do that. They just came up with that, you know, and it's just like, you know, they're just mugging for the camera. And there's a lot of that that goes on on social media now. It's just totally yeah. forged, yeah. <laughs> trying to be spontaneous, but it's not really spontaneous, planned and everything. So right. I, I've never been a fan. And I also felt, I, I, you know, and I don't mean to be like Scrooge here, but I, I, I kind of feel like we don't want to break the fourth wall too much. Mm -hmm. you know that oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the fourth wall is the wall between, you know, is between the audience and, and the, and the cast. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and they yeah. look straight out into the camera and they're looking out through the TV screen at the cat at the audience and they're having a conversation with the audience. That's what breaking the fourth wall means. Right. And I've never been a fan of that because what it does is it breaks, you know, you got, I hear all the time from Hardy's, we wish we could live in Hope Valley. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that all the time. They, they do. They, it's so aspirational. And so there's such an idealism about it, you know, and they, they love it. So I don't want to, I don't want to break that too much. Right. right. And so to me, the best bloopers that have happened are the ones that have happened in person where the Hardys are there. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Where they're with, where they're <laughs> with the actors at the Hardys family reunions. There's all, <laughs> kinds of, there's all kinds of goofy stuff that happens during those, those events, because yeah. now you're, it's humans and humans together in a room. It's not mm -hmm. breaking the fourth wall and saying, oh, look at me, I'm mugging for the camera now. Or I said yes. my lines wrong on purpose so that we could all laugh, right? Right, that, <laughs> right. That, 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 I'm a bit cynical about that. So I, I purposely, <laughs> I personally, you know, I'm not gonna say no, don't do it, but I, I per personally go, nah, let's not ruin the, the experience for the audience by throwing the, the, the giggle reel up. You know, um, let's, if we're going to do it, let's have some real fun happen between real people when we get them together for a cast fan mm -hmm. engagement. And that mm -hmm. stuff happens all the time at mm -hmm. the Hardy's family reunions. I mean, one of the best gags that happened was at the last Hardy's family reunion, um, pre COVID when, uh, Chris and Kevin uh -oh. were up on the, right, were up on the stage. <laughs> up on the stage and you might have seen pictures of this but they in this green room they said we want to we want to do this is it okay and so they opened up their jackets <laughs> their shirts and they had t-shirts and and they each had each other's team <laughs> on yeah. their shirts yes right we that saw pictures so of that mm -hmm. we loved it <laughs> oh, yeah i said that's gold let's go for it yeah it's totally it's a totally staged moment, right? Because they thought mm -hmm. through it enough ahead of time. It's not really a, a, a gag reel moment, but it's but it was awesome. It was it golden. Was awesome. It really was. It was golden. It de it delivered like gangbusters in that room. <laughs> in that big, it was so funny. That yeah. big hotel room, right? <laughs> so anyway, you know, and there's lots of moments that that happen like that among you know among the Hardys when they're with the when we're there with the cast and have that experience. It's, it just makes it so real and so personal and they feel mm -hmm. like they're friends, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, that's, that's my philosophy on the gag reel. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've had a lot of really amazing guest stars. Do you have, do you have a guest star that if there was no limitations that it would be your dream to have them on the show and you can go oh. as big as you want in Hollywood, or you can do Hallmark actors, whoever you want, who, who is your dream guest star? Well, you know, who, um, who loves the show. I mean, it's a weird thing to say, Reba, but Reba <laughs> McIntyre, loves the show she would be awesome there's a li there's a handful of those people um that love the show actually you know another person who loves the show that's just kind of amazing to me is a guy named mick foley oh and yeah mick uh -huh. mick was yeah mick, uh -huh. was, mick, was, mick was a character called mankind in the world wrestling federation mm -hmm. he, he was like this 
he wore a bag on his head. He was like this, this really crazy <laughs> dude. But he he absolutely loves when calls a heart. Wow. And I just I think love that. Would be, <laughs> that'd be really interesting to bring this guy through as a big lumberjack or something. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, on, all his hair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I so you know I would want somebody who really cares, you know, about the show. Oh, uh, of course. You know to to be um to be on the show that there's uh there's a um an act actor actress um who was um you know uh in, in mad men okay uh-huh mm -hmm. and the tv series and right. she's a big she's a big star now she she was she's um she's also in uh, elizabeth moss Oh, okay. 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 I've heard the name. Right. Yeah. Elizabeth Moss. You'd recognize her. She's also been in the show. Um, oh, what's that show that kind of crazy show on, on Amazon. She's the star of Handmaid's Tale. So she loves when calls the heart. She's a big, oh. she's a big movie star now. She's oh. a big movie uh -huh. star now. Mm -hmm. I would also, I've also thought it would be cool to figure out a way to bring Maggie Grace and Stephen Amell <gasps> onto the show. Yes. Oh, oh, that would be classic. That would be classic. Right? As Aunt Elizabeth <laughs> and 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 uh, Uncle Wynn, right? Oh, that, yes. Right. That would be that really interesting so cool. to do that. Yes, um, it would. So anyway, those are some of my favorite. I um, when Brooke Shields came on to, as Jack's mother, I, oh. that was the best time ever. That was, that was so much beautiful. fun. So much fun to have her on the show. I wish we could bring her back for more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just um, part, part of those those kinds of big, what we call, it's called, called stunt casting. Mm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually, usually that happens when you're early, earlier on in a show, before a show gets really established. Mm -hmm. At the end of the season, you're trying to do a big promotable Yes. kind of right. thing and so that's when we had James Brolin come on right. to the show mm -hmm. for a couple episodes we also uh -huh. had you know Brooke Shields come on for a couple episodes and that was you know for us it was like such an honor to have them but uh -huh. it was partly calculated to how can we give the network something very you know good to moat for the for the Hardys to right. give them something to be excited about and to lean into think about for the future so now that the show kind of is its own stunt, you know, mm -hmm. own stunt casting, it's its own star. Right. You mm -hmm. know, it's become a, a hit, a legitimate hit in television land, uh, where other people say it, not just us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, uh, that you don't necessarily have to do that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, uh huh. So you, <laughs> you find that on more on new shows where they're trying to right. you know, keep 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 the show going and give give lots of momentum to it so uh -huh. anyway oh man yeah those are some really that would be amazing if you could get all of them <laughs> i mean <laughs> for reba <laughs> all right start working <laughs> reba. absolutely I need reba. yes uh, absolutely so we promise to be very good girls here yes asking okay. our next question <laughs> um, okay so it's it's a twofer. Um, how yeah. big is your spoon for season eight, Mr. And <laughs> can we have five? If you could describe it in five words or less, elusively, of course. No, 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 no. Let's say five words. No, hey, less, listen, no we less. don't want to. <laughs> we don't want. We we. I like. I like waiting. I, I oh, like the anticipation. I like waiting too. I do and too, but I want like, my words. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me I answer the first. <laughs> me answer the first part of the question first, okay? You yeah. asked, "How big is my spoon for season eight? Uh -huh. Can you see this? Can you see this right here? <laughs> it's a paperclip. It's my, a paperclip. <laughs> it, it doesn't even have a like a middle part. It's like really things would flow right through it. It's a <laughs> It's a horrible spoon. <laughs> That's how big my spoon is for season eight. I have been sworn to secrecy in oh. such a huge way. 
Oh, in such a huge way. Wow, that I've was been, big. I've That's been big. gagged and I've been gagged and muzzled. <laughs> Everybody is so excited about what's coming. Oh my goodness! They look. They may, you know, give me the evil eye and say, "Don't you dare give anything away." <laughs> so, so I'm. I've been a Boy Scout so far. <laughs> I've, I've, got a, I've got a few bits and bobs away. You know, when I showed the when I showed the script cover for the first episode. Yeah. Ooh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. remember, remember what yes, I said? We talked about that. Honestly, yeah. Elizabeth. Honestly, Elizabeth. <laughs> no, no, it was the one before. It was oh, the one before. before. Oh, okay. oh. So, I do not remember about what you the, said. You about being emotional. All I said but, was. All I said was boom. That, yes, 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 yes I remember yes, that now. Yes, I remember right? that now. <laughs> so you can take it however you want. Maybe I just said boom because it's like boom worthy or wow, that's pretty cool. Or, you know, wow. <laughs> boom's going to happen. Or bring or back maybe there's... Master B. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, or maybe maybe that word is actually has meaning an acronym in the episode <laughs> could be i won't baby say baby jack uh <laughs> no never mind i can't do it <laughs> but because there i don't know if you recall this but you know i didn't invent boom you know who invented boom dan. on our show at least oh dan? Dan? okay that was dan yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was one of those mic drop things, you know, it was boom. It's like, there's nothing you can say that can top that. Right. right? Like, Is just shut up. Means? Boom, just shut you up because there's, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just the end. It's just like, mm -hmm. we, we, the conversation ends right now because Done. I just closed it mm -hmm. with boom. Right. Boom. And, um, and so he and I, and that's why I think that's why that boom bat master B thing came up is because he and I would just say it all the time. Mm -hmm. oh, the first, yeah. first couple of seasons there. And um, so anyway, boom has meaning that I'm not going to say anymore. Okay. Oh, no, keep going. Keep going. Oh, <laughs> no. we, we promised to be good. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, that's, it's, it's, it's it's a, a boom, mic drop boom moment, you know, as a teaser, as an appetizer, is meant to zip the mouth shut and mm -hmm. make your head explode. Make your head it explode. It has. That, oh, my head. That's, <laughs> <laughs> well, good. So I accomplished. You did your job. <laughs> I accomplished it. I accomplished what I set out to do there. You most so certainly did, sir. Mm -hmm. I, may, I may drop tidbits like that, but. Boy, during the first handful of seasons, uh, I would I would have so much fun with this because oh, I would yes, even yeah. would. season three I'd throw, was a doozy. <laughs> I, I would throw red herrings into the show. I would throw red herrings into the teasers uh, that didn't have anything to do with anything. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> my my the favorite first season, was the, Yeah, go ahead. What's your favorite? My favorite one was the when you talked about the dream sequence in season three um that was my favorite one i was like oh my gosh it made me laugh so hard <laughs> so no i i would i would take random pictures of things that didn't have anything to do with anything and just mm -hmm. drop them oh my God. right and just it's like and they're and everybody's just spinning like what does that mean you know what who is this old man this picture of this old man <laughs> it's like it just literally just a picture on the wall of the saloon, but it yeah. had nothing to do with the stories. <laughs> but and then I, I, I would, you know, as people were thinking, what's going to happen to Jack in, you know, before he got sick? Remember that? Mm, yeah. You know, and in, in, in the flood, and and they had to nurse him back to health and have a candlelight vigil. There was all this mm -hmm. speculation because somewhere somebody got a hold of some information like something bad was happening to jack and so mm -hmm. i would just Ooh. i would just drop i would find old pictures of like wheelchairs like from <gasps> 1910 or crutches or like um like uh prosthetic legs prosthetic oh legs <laughs> i would just 
I wouldn't say anything. I would just post them. Yes. I would just like, you know, just, just drop them out there. And, and it was so much fun to watch people twisting in the wind, trying to figure out what- I would love it what, too. Yeah. <laughs> That is so mean. That's oh, so, so funny. <laughs> I know, but yeah, but that, I'm the oldest brother. This is what you do in yeah. life when you have, mm -hmm. I had two younger brothers and, uh, you know, tor torture is like part of the job, you know, <laughs> uh, torturing the young people, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's fun. It's I'm true. the youngest of six. I can say that, yes, it is their job. <laughs> oh, yes. You definitely did get my head spinning with the Honestly Elizabeth. I came up with yes. every single character and what they might be saying. <laughs> Casey and I came up Casey's with was the best. Yeah. Oh yeah, Casey's was great. Yeah, Casey and I were, were coming up with lines of who says, of how different characters say, honestly, Elizabeth. You know? It was really fun. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah, she was brilliant. Was <laughs> the, the only thing, the only kind of, you know, vague, big picture thing I will say is okay. that if you guys thought we were cagey in season uh, seven with mm -hmm. the, the love triangle, mm -hmm. no more cagey. No more, ca <laughs> no more cagey. Whoa. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> okay, we're done. Bye. <laughs> Team Nathan. Team Nathan. Casey. Okay, no, no, no. Hey, I'm just, I'm just speaking for myself. I'm not putting words I, in anybody. I know. Else. I know. We promised we'd be good. Mount, the Mountie is on. handsome. The Mountie is handsome. I will. So. <laughs> so season eight in five words. Can you, can you do it? Uh, season eight and five words. Um, or less. No more KG, <laughs> just, just truth. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> when does the How's season that? start again? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I am Christmas, writing that Christ, down. <laughs> Christ, Christmas night. Christmas night. Yay. Oh, yay. Keeping up that tradition. Yeah. Still yes. strong. <laughs> it's yes. my favorite Absolutely. tradition. Yes. Absolutely. I wrote it down. I, I wrote that quote down. I want to remember that. <laughs> so good. good. Yeah. Good. So wrapping things up a little bit here. I wanted yeah. to ask you a hindsight question. So okay. first of all, is there anything that you wish you had done differently? And secondly, are there any happy accidents that you didn't mean to have happen, but they actually mm. turned out to be really, really good for the show? Uh Yes, I, 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 um, I don't know that we have any regrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, in hindsight, the I, I will say this. Season two was definitely a departure from the rest of the of the of the seasons. <laughs> That's right? definitely true. Yes. <laughs> Just the feel of it and so forth, and and part part of that is that. When a show first starts, you're 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 discovering it. Yeah, we are dis we are discovering it too, right? Mm -hmm. The audience is discovering it, but the 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 writers, the producers, the 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 stakeholders are also discovering it. Yeah, and you're trying mm -hmm. to find what works best. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of following Elizabeth back to her life, right? in Hamilton mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. meeting her family and seeing what life was like for, for her, it really seemed cool to us. Mm -hmm. It really seemed, yeah. what a great, you know, what a great, you know, way to keep the audience sort of engaged and guessing and all of that. Um, 
but it was interesting that we found at the end of season two, you know, us and the network, we, we all said, let's, let's quiz the audience. Mm. And so part of what happens on television shows is, and in honestly, most media projects, most campaign, you know, politi politicians do this. It happens all over the place. Product, you know, rollouts of new products and so mm -hmm. forth is you do what's called focus group testing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you bring people into a room and you show them, they, you show them your product and you get, and you ask them questions and you get their feedback on it. And so what we decided to do was to get three groups of people together to focus group. We did this in North Carolina, actually. And we, so one group was completely agnostic about the show. They, no, they didn't know anything about the show. Oh, okay. Never, oh, cool. Ne mm -hmm. Never seen it, never saw it before. The second group had maybe tasted it. Mm-hmm. Right, mm -hmm. maybe seeing an episode or two, but they didn't really, you know, they weren't fully hardies yet or engaged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third group was like you guys, who yeah. totally sold out, you know, like <laughs> we're we're there. We want to know everything. Yeah, we're there. And and we showed them episodes. We showed them an episode from season one and we showed them an episode from season two. And then we did then we had Q and A with them. And you know, it, it was facilitated by a, a professional focus group mm -hmm. researcher. Sure. And um, and so we were able to watch behind glass mm -hmm. to see oh. what you know what people would would be honest if they didn't if they didn't know who we were, they didn't know we were there, that yeah. kind of a thing. And all three groups picked the episode from season one. Mm. Uh -huh. And so we all put our heads together and said, okay, well, we need to kind of go back to more of the footprint of season one, go back to the town more, yeah. you know, spend more time in Hope Valley uh, and not travel as much. Now, it doesn't mean we don't leave sometimes and go to other towns and so forth, but the, 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 most of the emotional weight and storytelling happens in the town yeah. mm -hmm. because uh -huh what we realized out of those focus groups that was that Hope Valley was one of the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Of the show itself, the place, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. It's aspirational. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, and that's also part of the discovery process of what the show should look like. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people really loved the beautiful dresses from season two, the, uh -huh. the fancy hair, you know, the parties, kind of the Downton Abbey mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot yeah. of people loved it, a lot of people loved it, but most people loved the town more. And so what we said is maybe we need to be back in the town more and we need to give more of a sense of fashion to the town, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To kind of get the best sense. of both worlds. And mm -hmm. so that's why, that's why all of our actresses have these gorgeous clothes on, mm -hmm. right? And why their mm -hmm. hair looks good and why they have pretty makeup on and so forth. And part, part of it is it's, it's because we're creating an ideal experience, mm -hmm. uh -huh. right? Now, some shows, you know, I've, I've watched some shows and I go, wow, those are kind of grubby looking people. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like they're sweaty, their hair is greasy looking, you know, they're, they're dirty, they're filthy, their clothes are filthy. I mean, it's just the way the show is, right? Yeah. Just they're, they're, they, they believe, you know, in selling more of the real as opposed to the ideal. But we believe that most people, and there are some people that would appreciate more real over ideal, but we believe most people like the ideal because it, it's mm -hmm. aspirational. It's like, oh, I wish I had a dress like that. Oh, I wish I did my hair like that. You know, <laughs> that, and it's, and it's a felt need that mm -hmm. some people have for, 
to think about Hope Valley in an ideal way, mm -hmm. right? That the values are ideal. We wish we had those values in our life. We wish mm -hmm. we had the kindness of that, the, mm -hmm. the, the courage, the sense of community, the forgiveness, the redemption stories, you know, the nobility of doing the right thing, you know, mm -hmm. leaning yeah. into those idealistic ideas. And some people want real, but I think most people want ideal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and so that's why Hope Valley, we're back more in Hope Valley than ever, you know, than than we were in, in season two. Yeah. It's more like season one, but the but the town got prettier. We got started mm -hmm. to put signs. You know, part of that was we were on a, you know, we were doing our best to make the show the first season, you know, really you know, with limited resources, it's not like every, you know, people are getting rich doing this. This is, this is hard work and, it, and we do it very, in a very thrifty way. Mm -hmm. Save all parts of the animal is what we say, <laughs> you know, when we're doing these shows. So like that, that little church, you know, behind you mm -hmm. on your, on your Zoom screen there. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, <laughs> did you know that that used to be one of the row houses? From season one. No. Yes. I, I remember, I remember yeah. hearing about that. I there were have three never original heard ones. that. Yeah, we built in season one, we built three row houses and then we used digital extensions to make it look like 40. Right. right? Uh, but when we, but we had no church. We had the scaloon, as the Hardys, you know, <laughs> like to call it. Yeah. The school saloon in season one, because the church had burned down in our storytelling. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. Right. But we wanted a new church in season three, I guess it was season three where we built it. So uh, well, maybe it was two. It's all kind of a blur. It was, now, it was at the, it was yeah, it was season two. two. And then, yeah. Yes. End of season two. Uh -huh. Jack built a church with his reward money. But the, okay. but, but, so this is how thrifty we are, oh right? Boy. So the mercantile where it sits now used to be in the original town that we first arrived in, that, that we, for, when we first came there, mm -hmm. uh, that was a church originally, oh. right, on that, right on that corner, in uh, the way that the, that the McKinnis family built the town. That was a church. We said, well, we don't need a church because our storytelling has no church, right? So we took, we took the steeple off the mercantile and we oh. turned that building into the mercantile. Oh my but, we, word. but we saved the steeple mm -hmm. because in television, you save, all, you save all parts of the animal in oh, television, yes. Oh, yes. right? Because you never, you never know when you're going to need them. So we put it in storage. And then at the end of season two, when we built the new church, we poached one of our row houses and moved it over by the pond. Mm -hmm. And we, <laughs> re, re, we repitched the roof line steeper, mm -hmm. oh. right? Than it was on the house. Okay. Uh, and, right. And we put that little front, you know, narthex on it, mm -hmm. the little uh -huh. entryway with the stairs. And, and then guess we got the steeple oh. out, of, mm. out of storage. Out of storage. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So all that to say, you know, you're really thrifty when you're making television. Yeah. Right? Sure. You'd be as thrifty as possible and, and, and resor as resourceful as possible. So no regrets about how things happen. Wonderful learnings yeah. along mm -hmm. the way. Um, um, and what and what was this? What was the second part of the question? Happy I accidents. So no, it's fine. Happy accidents. Happy accidents. Uh, something that you didn't mean to happen, and it was maybe a mistake, but that it turned out to be great, and you kept it. Um, probably that steeple. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Most happy accident because when we pulled it off. We didn't know what, we didn't even know if we were going to have more than one season. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. And that, having that steeple there was like part of the reason to, to do what we did. And having that extra row house there was part of the reason we did, we had that. And then when we 
had to go looking in the cave when when um when Jack and Elizabeth are in the in the cave in mm-hmm. mm-hmm. looking for Rip. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we saved the cave too. Oh. From the coal, the coal mine. We saved the coal mine. Somebody else wanted to buy it. Oh. Oh. Another wow. production w- wanted to buy it, so we said no. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we said that's such a great set, you know, maybe wow. we'll want to go back in there. And it just so happened that one of the writers pitched Rip disappears, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we said let's 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 get the cave set out and and put it up again, the coal mine set. Oh. And we change it more more to a cave as opposed to coal as to a coal mine. Right. So right. um but anyway, uh yeah, so um those are probably the best happy accidents. There, there, you know, there are constantly little serendipitous storylines that pay off later on. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. You know, by not because we're smart, but because we just lucked in, we luck into them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So, mm-hmm. and I would say that the thing that, was not an accident but was that was a necessity for us that turned into a ha- a not a happy outcome but a um a fulfilling mm-hmm. outcome okay was was this when our friend Lori Lachlan went through her challenges Mm -hmm. and now and now she and now god bless her she is uh you know she's going to be able to to get justice is happening but also mercy is happening too yeah Uh and you know i've been praying for the best outcome possible for her and her family not just the most merciful one, but the but the most just one as well. Of and course. and I love the personal the personal um, you know journey that this you know that we all go through. We all make mistakes. You know, mm-hmm. there but for the grace of God, go I. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we all we all make decisions that sometimes are not the best decisions, and we have to you know look back on them. But when we were confronted in season six with that challenge, we didn't want the show to end. Oh, neither did oh. we. No. <laughs> right? There was a panic among all there of us. There was a huge yeah. Yeah. panic. Well, if you think you were panicked, think where we oh. were. We, oh, we, I can, we, I can, can only imagine. imagine. I can only imagine the level yeah. of anxiety I mean, that all of you had to go yeah. through. Yeah. I mean, we're here, you know, category one hurricane. Y'all are probably like category seven <laughs> off the charts that yeah, was seven category seven episodes left oh in yes. six mm. and three had aired and then we had to you know it was a mutual decision that the network made that we had to you know make with them but we had to agree to take Lori out of those last seven episodes mm-hmm. and figure out what to do because nobody wanted the show to end. The network didn't want the show to end. We didn't want it to end. But it was necessary because the, the, the controversy surrounding what happened was so great that, yeah. that you know, the network didn't want to you know, see the show you know, uh, go down with that. You know? And so uh. um, we had a choice. Either we, either show get, gets canceled now right? Or we try to figure something else. And it was painful for us to have to do this because we love Lori. Yeah. We want to see only the best for her. And, um, you know, and Hope Valley is a place of second chances. We believe in that, not just for stories, but for real life too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody deserves second chances. So uh, taking seven episodes and having to pull painfully pull Lori out of them Uh and then seeing what was left. I was worried 
that we were going to, you know, it was going to feel piecemealed, you know, uh, stitched back together in a, in a way that didn't feel as satisfying as the original episodes. But God has, I believe, had his hand around the show as he has since the beginning, since mm -hmm. the story I told in part one of this podcast. God has had his hands around this show since the beginning. And he was gracious to us and a really a bunch of really smart people mm. figured out how to recut these shows together. We, 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 we reconstituted them. We, we also added new material to mm. help fill out those, those episodes. We couldn't make seven work, but we were able to make six work. There, there was one episode that was so, such a big story for, for Abigail that we, uh -huh. We, could, we couldn't make that one. We couldn't salvage that one. Right. But we were able to salvage the other six. And I believe the audience would tell us that they were satisfied. That, it was that so they good. Were, that they were still deeply moving and satisfying. And part of, part of the, you know, if you, if you want to say happy accident of, of that whole scenario for us was that the, our other actors were had to go deep, go down deep, and pull something out of them that uh -huh. that what that might not have been there in those earlier episodes, and they filled in the gap for us for themselves, but also for Lori, yeah, because they uh -huh. wanted they wanted that to be a tribute to her that we that we would not leave her behind, you know in such a way as that she just disappears completely, but that her, that the power of her life in Hope Valley will live on, mm -hmm. right? And so I believe those episodes are so powerful now uh -huh. because some of the scenes we just let go for longer and they care, we got much, we got more character depth out of some of those those moments and those scenes mm -hmm. uh, and some of the new things that we shot. So that honestly was not a happy accident. It was a happy necessity or it wasn't a happy necessity. It was a painful necessity that had a satisfying outcome because uh -huh. the audience, the audience loved the shows. They continued to love the show. They didn't leave. They, they came back right for season mm -hmm. seven and now season eight in an even bigger way than they had before. So uh, I hope that answers your question. It, it, it does, yeah. Pulls, yes. pulls back the curtain a little back, uh, a little bit again, like we did with Dan's story, Dan mm -hmm. Listen's story, but pulls back the curtain a little bit on, you know, the real human factor that, you know, was there and that we we're all having to deal with. And, yes. you know, again, I just see it as, as a blessing mm -hmm. for not only the viewers, but for us, that it worked out it worked yes. out and, oh it uh, absolutely did uh, i mean uh, i am my favorite episodes yeah I, and i'm one to like see if i can you know put the pieces back together but it was it was so seamless like i mm -hmm. i wouldn't have known where abigail's story would have been at all and um it's just it was, it was a miraculous job yeah i was blown was. away you know and i think even if i had it if i were if i were an ignorant person i i would have thought that abigail's mother got sick and she had to i <laughs> Me mean I'd, be, I'd probably be a little like okay there's no goodbye but the story just flowed you know despite all yeah. that that's happened Dead. yeah yeah it it, it you know, yes, I, I'm with you on that. And, and we have really good editors. We have really good writers on our show. That's all I can Definitely. say. We have such a strong, such a strong group of people helping make this show that it really worked out. So um, anyway, I hope that kind of answers that that question that the best answers I, it more I than I could have even asked for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> That's awesome. Brian, That's awesome. you have you have truly blessed our lives by coming on and talking with us. And we just want to thank you so much for 
taking two nights out of your time. I know that your schedule must be hectic trying to do everything that you need to do. And we just sincerely want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming on and talking with us. It's been such a treat, such a learning time. I can't even tell you Mm -hmm. how much how much we have, the three of us have learned from just listening to you. And we are so, so grateful. And I know I speak for the Hardys out there. Thank you. Thank you for, for talking with us and, and sharing all of this. We really appreciate it's my, it. It's my honor. It's my honor. Thank you for asking me. And, and, and uh, I love what you guys are all about. And I love what I do with this, this, this new podcast. So I, I hope it, it, I hope it blows up for you in a good way. Boom. Boom. (laughs) Boom. (laughs) All right, Hardies. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you and we love Papa Hardy, don't we? Yes. (laughs) Yes, we do. (laughs) Everyone stay safe, stay happy. Remember that Remember that we are all in this together and we'll see you in Hope Valley. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Hardy's Hotline. For more information about the Hardy's Hotline, follow us on social media at Hardy's Hotline on Twitter and Instagram. We drop an episode every Wednesday, so we'll see you next week.